This is my first time using everything, like actually cutting hair. I'm cutting my son up. He switched it up. He getting a taper this time, right, puppy? So he getting a taper. He's switching it up. I'll show you guys the after. Mid-taper. Okay, you don't need to correct, like, bro. Just make sure you know. First time using it, I'm loving it, man. It's, it's a good time. We still got the power mat over here. I'm probably gonna slide this right behind the power mat and uh, rock out like that, but it's been dope. Like it? Yeah. All right, cool. <laughs> Man, look at that. That is crazy. Yo, if anybody does this, they're psycho. <laughs> YouTube, y'all been asking me, you know, how wide is the base? So this is the base right here. You guys can see 22 and three quarters, 22 and three quarters. If your station isn't at least this wide, are you even barbering? I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Don't get mad at me, don't get mad at me. Some of y'all sensitive these days, but it's not that wide. So let's show it on this toolbox. This is a smaller than typical toolbox. You guys can see it's really low, it's a small one. And look at all the space that you have, right? You'll have all this counter space, you still have space here. So if you have like a really small toolbox, this isn't your standard size, it's a smaller one, it's gonna fit more than fine. All right, you guys, I'm on my way to the barber supply store because I gotta pick up a bunch of clippers. We're gonna pick up a bunch of clippers. And the reason why is because we got CT Barber Expo coming up. We gotta have tools, right? Our clippers tend to find a, a way to run away from us. So I'm gonna buy two of each clipper that we'll have on the stands if I don't already have a couple pairs. And then we're gonna write it with a Sharpie. We're gonna write down, you know, that they're 245, property of 245. Hopefully Ideal Barber Supply got a whole bunch of clippers because we're about to buy like 30 pairs, 36 pairs of clippers. This is going to be interesting if they got them. Guys, I haven't been to this store in forever, but this is a Ideal Barber Supply. It's interesting because I can read that right now, but on my phone, it's showing weird. They're hiring. I haven't been here in a minute. All right, I can see the store. Got power mats. Look at these power mats. So, oh, they got some, hey, JRL got some dope combs. Yeah, they got way more inventory than they used to have. Inspired them. Inspired them. See small amount of 245 products. That's all right. We're growing, guys. We're growing slow and steady. Let's go buy some clippers. We got a bunch of gammas. Let me do the low pro, the gold one with the trimmer. Yep, that's set right there. Let me get one of the foil FX uh, shavers. Let me get one magic clip, one legend, two masters, one of the trimmers, one of the TI liner trimmers. Hi. Are you sassy? Yep. How you doing? Oh, nice, to <laughs> nice to meet you. Let me do that wall shaver. I think with that, I'm good. The guys at Ideal hooked me up with a discount. I ain't gonna tell y'all what it is, but they hooking me up with a discount, so it's not gonna be that painful. You guys can see we stocked up, man. We got a whole bunch of tools here. Hopefully they don't get stolen at the shows. I'm gonna put an air tag on them, track them down if you guys take them. I'm gonna show you guys my discount, but I'll show you guys how much we spent. Damn, $2,000 on clippers and trimmers. So I'm gonna need y'all support, SCT Barber Expo. <laughs> We heading out, guys. Ideal Barber Supply. You guys need a reputable barber supply store. They've been in business for years now, you know, since when I was full-time barbering. Family-owned, genuinely good people. They're based in Tampa, the most, I would say, reputable in Tampa. There's another barber supply store. Starts with a V. I wouldn't do business with them if I had a gun to my head. But uh, <laughs> these guys, I like. Idealbarbersupply.com. Appreciate the discount, guys. It wasn't like a steep discount. Like, it was a good discount, don't get me wrong, but it wasn't like, you, know, you guys might think that they gave me like 50% off, something like that. But they did, they did hook it up, and every single point was appreciated. We got a lot of work to do still, so almost a week away from CT's, it's grind time. Pia County will be at the same booth. Barber Josh O.P.'s company will be at the same booth. So it should be, that section is gonna be rocking. I'm telling you. You guys, that's where I went to barber school, that building right there, where it says Beauty Academy. It took me almost two years to finish that damn barber school, man. But it was, we got a lot of reps. We got a lot of reps, a lot of practice. You know, there was days I would do 10 haircuts in a day. So that's one thing I gotta give it up to school. They had a, a lot of walk-ins. Pretty much everybody that I know um, that works with with headlines, like like my friends, my close friends that became barbers, that's where they went. They ain't perfect, but they, they've been good to us.
I've not been to this plaza in a while and it already looks so different, so much better. We're at the Bexley location. It's already full. We got 10 barbers already. It's already full. This, this is a shop that Turbo Mo is at. Turbo Mo, by the way, did 14K last month. That was not open before. Oh, that's not open yet. I was gonna eat there. The Pokey Company. I don't know what that is. P Fit. I wonder if that's open. They hiring guys. If y'all looking for a gig, they hiring. Uh-oh, we got barbers sitting around. That's not good. So we got the candle bar. That last studio has always been open. This was open briefly the last time I came. What's up, bro? Good to see you, man. Was it slow today? Pretty busy, man. Pretty busy? Oh, it's, yeah, it's busy. Okay, it's a Thursday. We here, guys, check it out. Ooh, nice busy shot. Turbo Mo, the, the infamous. All right, so. Look, guys. Yeah, exactly. So you got 152 unique customers. So you know these are real clients. They come at least three times every 90 days. And you can see all his KPIs, his average revenues, average visits per year. Obviously it's low because we haven't seen the whole year yet. Uh, annual customer value, obviously it's low because it hasn't been a whole year yet, but gross total revenue, total product revenue, like amazing. You know your business. <laughs> All right, guys, so this is the outside of it. We haven't gotten our signage installed yet. We have to get signage in the front and the back. I believe it's paid for already. We just haven't had, had it installed. But this is the plaza, guys. You guys have seen the blueprints. You guys know how we negotiate, what we ask for, and what kind of terms we get. And this is gonna be like a stage. They're gonna have live music. They're gonna have events and stuff. So that's gonna be cool. The brewery did? Oh, I'm gonna go eat over there. Thanks. You got a liquor store over there. Look like an Italian spot, looks good. Opening in the fall. Damn, it's gonna take up this whole building. So that's gonna be a nice restaurant probably. That place is open, so I'm gonna go check it out. This is P-Fit, the standard of fitness. So we make the most of the space. 777 square feet, guys. And, it's, and, it, and it works, man, and it works. Especially in the plaza like this, you know, the guys don't have to hang out in the shop. There's plenty of places to hang out here, eat out. The shop is to make money, not to just sit around. If we're doing our part, we don't need a nice meeting area or we don't need a, a lot of seating and stuff like that. Clients are coming in and out and it works. All right, so guys, I want y'all to check out these um, tiered stands that we have made for the power pods, the new 245 power pods. We'll have it at the show, but a few of you guys have asked if we're gonna sell them. So I don't know if we'll do the three tier, we will. That would be crazy if somebody actually has their own three tier. But I can see the two tier one selling selling pretty well. So I think we might sell them on the website. But if you haven't seen what I'm talking about that I posted on Instagram, here's some clips of it. Check it out. All right, you guys. So I recently shared my credit score with Facebook, the Facebook community, you guys can see it like right here or whatever. It's up to like an 836. And this is a credit score that I use a lot. Every few months I'm, I'm getting inquiries because we're trying to get pre-approved for, for real estate, getting a credit card. I like maximizing my points and, and being able to travel for free. Um, I bought cars, you know, in the, last, in the last year I bought one car actually. I use my credit pretty heavily. It's not like one of those credit scores where I got two credit cards and I never. And so when I get inquiries or something happens with my credit, it doesn't crush my credit so much because I've got such a diverse credit report. I got a long history as well. So, and I got, a, I got huge credit balances. The more you build your history, the more you use your credit, the stronger it's going to get, the nicer things you can buy, the bigger credit limits you're going to get. And so I just wanted to give you guys a few tips here, what I did to, to get my credit score good, because I had terrible credit. I, I was in the low 500s for a very long period of my life, most of my life. I had two repos under my name. My credit was messed up before I even knew what credit was because some people were using my credit score while I was a minor. People like cable companies and T-Mobile, cell phone companies already had me in collection. By the time I even started realizing credit was important, what it was, and that I needed to build it, my credit was already jacked. So I come from a long time of bad credit. I can tell you fundamental things that help my credit. It doesn't take a long time to build your credit back up. First thing is paying your credit cards on time. Getting started, if you're not very responsible, I would at the very least set auto payments for the statement balance. So at the very least, you got a good payment on time and your credit utilization stays low. And on top of that, if you're not very responsible, pay your card off every Friday on top of that. Pay it off every Friday until you start becoming more responsible and then you can just leave the credit card statement, the auto pay that you set up, leave that, and then just make sure you're paying off your card on your due date 
the auto pay is just backup in case you forget because it happens but you should be going on your due date and paying the card off in full the other thing is keeping your credit utilization low for some of you guys getting more credit cards would actually help your credit the reason why is because if all the credit cards you have right now are lower limits then any type of spend is going to affect your utilization. I have so many credit cards and, and, and high credit limits that I could spend 10 grand and still stay way below my credit utilization. I would stay below 20%. I would try to be at the 10% range. Actually, I would be paying it off every single month. Just pay it off every month, be at zero. Use the card, pay it off. Use the card, pay it off. So there's two things that will do amazing for your credit. Very last thing is you gotta have some type of diversity. So you can't just build your credit on credit cards. You can, but it's not going to hold a lot of weight. You can have two 800 credit scores and one of them can be better than the other. This 800 credit score might get denied for a new car, like a Tesla. You go to buy it, they're gonna deny you, even with that 800 credit score. But then this guy with an 800 credit score who has a diverse credit report and has some history of having car payments and stuff, they'll get approved. The difference is not just what the score looks like, it's when the banks, when underwriting goes and they look at your actual credit report and they see what's in there, they wanna see that you, you've proven some type of responsibility with big payments like that. You can tell who's a fake guru or you can tell who's faking it when they go from being broke and in the same year buying a Lamborghini. Lamborghini is not going to approve people like that. You have to have had, you know, an $80,000 car, a $120,000 car, and then maybe Lamborghini will say, oh, you've shown that you pay higher car payments. We can start you off with a Huracan at 250K, but you're not just gonna go straight to the damn Aventador. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't really work like that. Now, could you do that? Not through Lamborghini. You could do it through somebody who is really kind of like the middleman between them. He's a broker and he's the one that's selling you that car. He was the one that acquired it with his reports. And then you're gonna buy it from that guy. And that guy will probably honestly do in house financing where you're gonna be paying, you know, 10, 12% interest. And that's how that guy makes money. That's how a lot of celebrities, if they're doing it that quick, it's not standing on their own two feet. They have to leverage other people. And because of that, there's so many people in the middle that you're paying an astronomical price for that, for that exotic vehicle, right? That last point that I'm trying to make is you wanted to have something diverse. Have some revolving credit, credit cards, right? Or lines of credit, but then also have some installment loans where once you pay it off, it's paid off. And you can start that by just going, you know, you can go to your credit union, your local bank, and even the big banks and ask them, how can I set up uh, some type of personal loan? I'm trying to help build my credit. And they might say, hey, if you put a thousand dollars in a CD, we'll give you a personal loan. The reason why is because it's going to be backed by your money anyways. The collateral is there in their banks, in their accounts. They have your money that they can use, create income and they can give you a loan, which is creating income for them, but it's backed by the CD, by your cash that you put as collateral in their bank. So that's one way you can do it. And that's like one of the easiest ways to do it. A lot of you guys, you're so open to bringing in an investor, you know, giving equity in your barbershop, for example. That person is going to be with you. You guys are married now forever. Where if you partner with a bank instead, once you pay them off, the whole business is yours. You see what I'm saying? So I'd rather partner with banks. And when you pay them off, banks like you even more, they loan you more money, and then you can start doing some bigger boy deals, right? So anyways, those are the three things, guys. Pay your stuff off, set up that auto pay, keep your credit utilization low, or get more credit so your credit limit is higher. And the last thing is make sure you have a diverse credit report that you have installment loans and revolving credit. That's gonna help strengthen how real that credit score number is for you. But good luck guys, hope you enjoyed the vlog and I'll see you on the next video.